Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In the previous video, we have a checks on the NanoPi's R4S and I received a lot of suggestions from you guys on what kind of tests I can do and among them, the highlighted suggestion will be enable packet steering and then try KXQM with the default configuration and let's see if the router can handle gigabit with SQM and another command were to download and upload at the same time and see if the router can handle both upload and download at gigabit speed all right so in this video i'm going to do the test this is our network diagram and in order to download and upload at the same time i am running two ipub server one server on my dell optilex 7010 right here and another ipub 3 server in my local computers so this is the nanopi r4s and by default it is very easy to run an ipub client on the hp compact to download from this ipub server but in order to run it in a reverse way we need to configure port forwarding and in order to do this i have like configure port forwarding for port 5201 to uh, this device which is the current PC right here okay so let's go back to the test and let's see all right so this is the NanoPi's R4S and right now the packet steering is still disabled so as you can see right here if you go to network interfaces and local network option it will disable and SQM will disable as well all right, so this is the iPod 3 server running on the Dell Optilex 7010 and the iPod 3 server running on my LAN, on my local network. On the Dell Optiplex server, we will be running the iPod 3 client as well. Okay, so this is the one IP of our NanoPi's R4S, as you can see from here. And then on the HP A300, we will be running the iPub3 client test. So it will be connecting to the Dell server. All right, so are you ready? Let's go. Enter and then enter. We are having 933 MBB at download and 540 MBB at upload. So the CPU is fully loaded on two cores and the RAM is still free. Okay, so as you can see, this is the result for the iPod 3 client test from the Dell's Optiplex to my local PC. So from this one at the client to this one at the server. So we are performing an upload connection from here to here. All right, so we have 565. And then for the iPub client test on HB A300, we are having around 925, which is from this device downloaded from this server. Okay, so uh, we can see that it cannot handle a gigabit upload and download at the same time, but this is a very impressive result. Should you try enable packet steering? And let's see if the loss will be thread between all the cores okay so let's do that let's go to the global network options and enable packet steering and hit save and apply all right so let me just run edge stuff one more time and then let's go back to the open speed test let's run it So we can see that the lot is only on call 4 and 5. It doesn't like straight to all the calls at what we have expected. Okay. And if you go to networks and then firewall, we can see that uh, we are not running shortwave flow uploading. We are disable it. All right. So let's run the pivot test one more time. So the iPod 3 test, both server and client. Enter and let's go.
The result is still the same. We're having 918 megabit per second download and 579 megabit per second upload. So let me try then enable shortwave flow uploading and let's see if there are any changes in the result. Okay. Okay, so let's run the test for another time. Let me enter and then hit enter. We can see that with shortwave uploading enable, we have a higher upload. It is up to 673 megabit per second, while the download speed remains 919 or 15. All right, so that is the download and upload at the same time and the packet steering. So now let's try with another suggestion, which is KSQM. All right. So now we can see that let me first of all let me just disable the shortwave flow uploading because uh, SQM doesn't work with uh, shortwave uploading really well so I will disable that and now let's rerun the test before and after we enable the SQM QoS all right so right now the SQM is still disabled and you can see we're using cake and piece of cake so it is right now disabled so let me try to ping maybe a dot a dot a dot a dash t and hit enter so the average response time is around 33 and 34 ms and let's run the open speed test server So as you can see we have the response time go up to 50s and then it went back to 34. So how about an IPUB test and an open speed test at the same time and let's see if there are any changes in the CPU speed. Ping from my local PC which is this one to Google is around 34 or 33 ms. And now I'm going to run the two download and upload tests at the same time one from my PC to the open speed test server on this Dell Optiplex and at the same time I will run in an iPub3 client from this HP A300 so let's just do that all right so now we are going to run the iPub3 test all right so iPub3 C10.42.0.1.20 and at the same time, we will refresh in this page and let's go. Alright, so as you can see, we have the response slightly increase, go up to 45 and 41 and they are time out in the response time, request time out. So this is what happens when we are running the open speed test server and the ipub3 server at the same time so it's go to 50 and when the test stop it went back to 34 okay now let's go and enable sqm qos so let me click on the enable this sqm instance so all right so let's hit save and apply So right now the SQM QoS is enabled with upload and download speed set to 930 MBPS and we are using cake and piece of case. Alright, so there were no change in the link layer adaption. Okay, so let's go to this open speed test and let's have a look at the edge top 
top and the ping so we have 34 or 35 ms in the response time and let's go with the test and as you can see there were no much difference in the response time it is still 33 or 34 ms and on hdoc we can see that the loss thread between five cores of the cpu so we can see that the nanopies are for as a handling gigabit internet connection at 50 percent cpu users and we have another 50s idle right so let's check back the response time we have only one time that the latency the response time go to 47 and then it go back to normal so this is a lot of improvement with sqm and i can confidently say that the nanopies r4s can handle gigabit internet throughput with sqm qos all right so let me just go back to the comments and let's see what else we can do can you run ipub 3 with client option t 60s or longer uh, a too short and also tap to run dash r to run in a reverse mode all right so i think we don't need to run in the reverse mode but we can run the ipod 3 client test for another time okay so ipod 3 client test for long time okay let's do that Okay, so we can see that with SQM QoS enable, we only have around 820 megabit per second for the IPUB test. So maybe after this test, I will try to disable the SQM QoS and let's see if we have any differences in the result. Alright, so 819 megabit per second with SQM QoS enable. So let's disable the SQM QoS networks. SQM QoS disable this and hit save and apply. Alright, so let's go. all right so the result is only 830 something i'm not sure if this is because we run it for multiple time or this is because we disable the packet steering and the shortware flow of loading but let's see so now i want to run another test and in this test i will be enable shortwave flow of flooding and i will be enable the sqm qos as well so let's check it out so shortwave flow of flooding enable not fully compatible with sqm qos never mind i want to try that network sqm qos enable so Ethernet 1 is our one interface. And this time, let's test it out. All right, so let's open another command line. Okay, let's ping a.a.a.a.t and Let's run the IPUB client test.
we can see that with SQM QoS enabled and shortwave flow offloading enabled, we only have 547 megabit per second for the IPUB client test. And the response time, the ping response time from the PC to an upstream uh, server, which is the Google server, is still the same at 33 or 34 ms. So let's try with the open speed test and let's see if there are any differences. All right, so 545 megabit per second with SQMQS enables and shortwave flow offloading enable. Now let's run the open speed test. And let's monitor the ping. Let's go. All right, so 900 MBBS downloads and the ping response time is still the same and the lot is stretched on sick call with CPU at about 35% idle. And same here, we can see that the ping, the response time from the upstream server is still the same. Alright, so we can see that even though it is stated that SQMQS and Shortwave flow offloading is not really compatible, but it's a working rate on the NanoPi R4S. So I'm going to end the video here and thanks for your attention. If you have anything else or any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video. Bye bye.